We are living in a new world, Facebook world, in which 750 million people share ideas, not thinking in borders. It's a global community bigger than US. The theme of this panel is transnational politics in the information age. And recent events have showcased the way in which information technology can be used to mobilize activists transnationally. But the transnational community I would like to talk about in my presentation today is the worldwide network of international relations scholars and experts known as the International Studies Association. That's right, scholarly communities also are transnational political agents. We construct the world in our classrooms, in our op-eds and TV spots, through our briefings, consultancies, and fellowships among practitioners. We function as norm entrepreneurs and as brokers. And what we don't do enough is study the way this works, but we should. And to that end, what I want to do today is give some hypotheses about how IT may be affecting the relationship between IR scholars as a community and the world we study. And the information technologies that I want to focus on are Web 2.0 and 3.0 technologies, Facebook, blogs, Twitter, wikis, YouTube. We've all heard about how YouTube is revolutionizing world politics and magnifying focusing events. We've all heard how Twitter shapes revolutions, empowers citizens against their governments and is displacing mainstream media industries. We've heard how Facebook contributes to transnational political community or possibly to the retrenching of the state. But user-generated media is not just arguably revolutionizing world politics, it's also changing how the experts who study and interpret that world for others interface with the world and with each other. These new communication structures are reconstituting us as agents. Fun facts from the latest trip survey of IR scholars worldwide, for example, 90% of respondents now use YouTube in their teaching, 28% have contributed to blogs, 51% believe IR blogs have a beneficial impact on the discipline, and 90% believe blogs have a positive impact on foreign policy formulation. And new research suggests these beliefs have a basis in fact. This study shows a mention on a blog increases the chance of a scholarly article ever getting read by some staggering magnitude. And by the way, where did I find out about this study? On a blog. These new platforms are not just augmenting how we access, absorb, and interpret academic research in descriptive terms. I think they're also reconstituting how we teach world politics, or if not, they certainly should be. They're reconstituting how we research, write, and cite how we communicate concepts and debates to practitioners and to one another, and they're reconstituting what we consider the study of world politics to include. I would go farther to argue that new media is also shifting the boundaries between IR scholarship and practice, between the academy, the policy world, and the public sphere. And here are three testable propositions about how that's happening. First, new media is flattening hierarchies within the profession as scholars at all ranks circumvent conventional gatekeepers and communicate more directly outside of academic channels. Blogs and Twitter have changed who counts as an expert and they engender not only a flattening of expert outputs but also a flattening of the inputs that construct experts' ideas as commenters from all geolocales, political views, backgrounds and ranks now weigh in on academic thoughts as they're being formulated. An invisible college, to use Brad DeLong's words. And new media is providing new ways to do IR, creating different ways to access data and conduct research, different ways to debate with one another and to disseminate our work. It's promoting interdisciplinarity. It's reconstituting what it means to publish and to co-author, and even what it means to do professional service in the discipline. A new media is changing the language of scholarship. It's making it more terse, concise, and frankly more fun. It's condensing a scholarly argument to a tweet or a status update or a creative YouTube video ensures its wider impact. But it also forces distillation, 
This simplifies and snarkifies the nature of scholarly discourse. Humor and satire are now part of the scholar's arsenal in ways that were unseemly in the past. I'm not necessarily saying this is a good thing, but it's there. And finally, Web 2.0, and particularly social media, encourages a blurring of the boundary between the personal, the professional, the civic, and the scholarly. As members of the Twitterati, we are now as inclined to mention what our kids are doing, what shows or sports we follow, or who we're voting for, as what scholarship we admire. And thanks to the way we've been retrained by Facebook and Twitter, we're no longer compartmentalizing those forms of discourse. Why does this matter? Well, first, because it correlates, I think, with an expansion of what we consider appropriate subjects for IR scholarship. The personal is now more mainstream political than two decades ago, but so is the cultural, which helps explain the drastic increase not only in applications and analyses of pop culture metaphors, artifacts, industries, and actors by social scientists on the new internet, but also the increase in attention to these topics in scholarly journals and conference papers, like the one I'll present Wednesday on the Battlestar Galactica metaphors in tweets about the Egyptian revolution. This is a serious study that began as a frivolous blog post responding to patterns I noticed in the Twitter sphere. The second reason this matters is because this blurring of hats licenses and incentivizes scholars to acknowledge our embeddedness in the worlds we're studying and our role in constructing and interpreting these events in the world, like the Arab Spring, through language and linking practices in ways previously relegated to the ruminations of reflectivist writers. But beyond that, new media provides a detailed, quantifiable, searchable, qualitative historical text record in the data stream of precisely how and to what extent and under what conditions we and others are exerting that effect, one there for the mining and exploration should we choose to go boldly in that direction. The results so far? IR as a discipline and political science broadly has become more critical, more reflective, more conscious of our agency and our ethical obligations thereby, more edgy and more fun. And maybe this is translated into greater appeal to the masses and greater cachet with policymakers. Maybe. As I said, research on these subjects is scarce and these are testable propositions only. And whether any of this is good for the academy or foreign policy, if true, remains to be examined. But at a moment in history when the same technologies and world events are also evolving in ways we can barely keep up with, it's high time we paid attention to these questions. Thank you.